Well, I, I, I think what has played out between uh, Australia and China is um, regrettable. Certainly, it is very important for Australia to be able to have its voice, um, and the government has been right in terms of uh, standing up for uh, pursuing an independent inquiry, that, that it is important that when Australia has... Um, a national interest which differs from um, the view of China, that we are in a position to uh, state that and to prosecute it. Um, I think one of the issues that has played out, though, Tom, is you know there's been an absence of uh, the voices of both Maurice Payne, Maurice Payne and the Prime Minister, to be frank, and we've seen a lot of quite inflammatory comments from government members on the backbench which, which fill that void. And so I think one of the issues here is that in, in what is a very complex relationship, and obviously a relationship which we must come to from the point of, from the, from the first principle of, of seeking to value the relationship, given China is our largest trading partner, um, there's not a lot of ballast in the relationship. And it's one that's been deteriorating over a number of years. And when you look at the comments of those backbenchers, it's, uh, it, it's no wonder that's the case. Well, backbenchers make comments. The government can't silence them. Can you point to something the government should not have done or said to do with this current tension? Well, I, I, I think uh, the government is responsible for its backbenchers. And when you look at um, the kind of comments that George Christensen, for example, has made in an opinion piece today, I mean, it is, it is completely over the top. Uh, and we've seen, you know, person after person on the government side make these comments. So if you want me to point to government action, I'd actually point to the government inaction mm. of, of both the Foreign Minister and the Prime Minister from articulating a sensible path forward in terms of our relationship with China such that that becomes the dominant position of this government in, in, in respect of the relationship. And, and I'd also make the point what? that it, it, it is it, it is fine, Tom, and, and, and it should be, you know, mm. an independent inquiry. We do need to understand the origins of the coronavirus. That is fine, and it is a difficult thing to say within the context of our relationship with China, but it still should be said. Um, but it is precisely uh, because there isn't ballast in the relationship that the relationship has been going in the wrong direction for a number of years now under this government um, that, that we get into this issue now. But do you really think if there'd simply been some slightly different language or some backbenchers hadn't spoken out, but the government was still calling for this independent inquiry, everything wouldn't be, would be fine? There wouldn't be these threats over tariffs and uh, this mysterious blocking of beef? I think uh, the... It, 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 well, really, the question is, uh, you know, has, do I think the relationship has been managed well over the last few years? And the answer to that question is I don't. Um, and, and I, I well, and, but let's get to and it's the, not okay, one. Let, where let me you ask can... you this way: Let's get to the crux of this debate. It's, be, it's it's really heightened up because Australia is saying we need an independent inquiry into how coronavirus was handled, including by China. Does Labor back that view? Yeah. And once that's unequivocal, China's going to have a problem with it. Isn't that true? Well, I, I, I don't think relationships are anywhere near as simple as that. And I think that's the point here. I mean, I think the government would like to mm. uh, portray a sense of, of, of that simplicity. But, but that, I mean, when you think about it for, you know, more than a minute, that's obviously wrong. I mean, that, that, that this is a deeply complex relationship. Um, it's one that we must value because we're talking about a relationship with our biggest trading partner. There's no one, literally no one in the country who is suggesting that we should disengage with China. In fact, we have massive engagement with China. And so at that point, you know, you, you're in the space of needing to um, work on the relationship and it doesn't happen in relation to one incident. It happens over a longer mm. period of time. Now, you want to look at iso in isolation of the one decision about whether or not there should have been a call for an independent inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus. Yes, there should have been. Um, but okay. how that plays is going to be very different in terms of the context of the relationship that's occurred. Well... Let me ask this. What's your message to anyone out there that might be watching, including the ambassador, whomever it might be? How does federal Labor feel about the Chinese Communist Party at the moment and, and around coronavirus? Well, we've made, our, we've made our position clear. We think there should be 
um, an independent inquiry in relation to the origins of the coronavirus. That's very important mm. from the point of view of China, actually, but it's very important from the point of view of the world. And I, I think it's less about blame and much more about understanding what happens so that we can make sure that this never happens again. Um, so we absolutely think that. Um, but but we would come to a relationship with China on the starting from the starting position that it's a relationship that we value and it's one that we want to build because we obviously have a very significant engagement. And mm -hmm. it's in doing that that you build ballast, you build seriousness in the relationship, which actually gives you the voice to be able to articulate difference okay. um, when that's what our national interest requires. And there will be times where it requires it. And I accept the fact that in relation to an independent inquiry, that's an example. But it's got to be possible to do that um, mm. in a way which, which doesn't then give rise to problems in the relationship. And when you look at all the comments that have been made by the backbenchers, I mean, what we've seen from George Christensen today um, is, is, is a, I mean, it is a, a very um, well, This is his comment. And the Chinese Communist Party deliberately allowed ambassadors... I'll just read it out, perhaps, if you're reluctant to. Um, deliberately allowed ambassadors of death to infect the rest of the world. Now, let's be clear. The government relies on George Christensen's vote to govern. He is a member of the government. Um, and so are a series of backbenchers. So the idea that the government can uh, come in and say he's got nothing to do with us, that's patently wrong. He is a member of the government and the government governs by virtue of the vote that he provides. Um, there must be some right. responsibility taken for his statements. Um, and what we've got is basically a foreign minister who is missing in action and more than that... Um, wants to make a, a, a statement that, that she has no obligation to articulate Australia's foreign policy to the Australian nation, that it's fine that she doesn't do media. It's not okay. fine. It's absolutely not fine that she's Just... not out there giving a very clear sense of where the government's at, and instead we've got these voices uh, coming into the equation. Um, and okay. so I guess my point is, uh, do I think these voices are relevant in what's going on? I do. Uh, worth mentioning that she did interview an interview with Kieran Gill, my colleague, yesterday, so happy for her to, to come on the network. Just finally and briefly, you asked Prime Minister yesterday about the sports grants program. Um, he said he only had authority over announcements. Do you accept his response? Oh, I think these are the most pathetic weasel words uh, that you're ever going to hear, uh, and I reckon that's how the Australian public are going to view it. Uh, so he was, Prime Minister was he lying and his or did he mislead uh, 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 They are up... They're up to their neck in it. I mean, to try and draw a distinction between uh, authority around the, the, the publicity of the decision and the decision itself, uh, I mean, no-one uh, would think that that is a distinction which passes the pub test. The fact of the matter is All there right. are emails which make it clear that the Prime Minister's authority is what was required in terms of making these decisions, um, and, and I think that the world can see that this, this uh, appalling scheme that ran in the lead-up to the last election uh, what was was a scheme where the Prime Minister and his office were up to their neck in it. Richard Miles, thanks for your time today.